Russia is preparing an aircraft it doesn't expect to export because it may no longer have a choice. A larger superjet is being revived to replace Airbus and Embraer, not through competition, but necessity. As the SJ-100 moves toward certification under sanctions, plans for a stretched SJ next resurface at a critical moment. This isn't about beating the market, it's about functioning without it. Why does this size matter so much? And are we witnessing the early signs of a permanently divided aviation system? Let's discover. The Superjet story collapsed under its own dependencies. Designed to integrate Russia into the global aviation ecosystem, the original Superjet 100 relies heavily on Western components, most primarily the French-Italian SAM 146 engines from Powerjet. When after-sales support faltered, aircraft sat idle, operators lost confidence, and geopolitical concerns turned technical, focusing on strategic vulnerability. Ambitious stretch concepts like the SSJ-130 and SSJ-NG quietly died long before they ever reached metal. From that failure emerged the SJ-100, not as an upgrade, but as a survival rebuild. Western suppliers were stripped out and replaced with domestic systems, anchored by the Aviad Vigatel PD-8 engine, while the original airframe was largely preserved to control cost and time. Certification flight tests are now underway, including complex automatic landing trials at Tchaikovsky, with initial deliveries targeted around 2026. This aircraft was not designed to compete it was designed to function under constraints. And that constraint is exactly what defines the SJ Next proposal. Rather than starting over, Yakovlev plans to stretch the SJ 100 platform to around 120 seats and a 58-ton maximum takeoff weight, retaining the same engines, production lines, and a roughly 3,600-kilometer range. The goal is speed and containment, reviving long-abandoned family ambitions within five to six years, with minimal investment and maximum reuse. But this logic carries a deeper implication. If the foundation itself was shaped by sanctions, retrofits, and forced substitution, does scaling it create a new aircraft family, or simply scale the compromises that defined it in the first place? If you want deeper, no-hype analysis on global aviation shifts, subscribe for more. The decision to stretch the Superjet into a 120 to 130 seat aircraft is not driven by ambition. It is driven by arithmetic. This is the narrow slice of the market where trip costs drop faster than complexity rises where airlines can move more passengers without jumping to full, narrow-body economics. Globally, this space has been refined by aircraft designed from the ground up for it. In Russia, it is being entered sideways. After 2022, aircraft like the Airbus A220 and Embraer E2 didn't lose relevance. They simply vanished from the supply chain. Routes didn't disappear. Demand didn't shrink only access collapsed. That created a vacuum, not an opportunity. The next gen is built to fill that void, not because it outperforms its Western peers, but because it can exist without them. This is substitution by necessity, not a matter of preference. But here is the pressure point. The SJ-100 itself has yet to prove high-rate production, dispatch reliability, or long-term PD-8 durability in airline service. Yet Yakovlev is already planning to stretch it. That means the aircraft's structural margins, system scalability, and certification assumptions are being locked in before operational reality has a chance to push back. Stretch first, learn later. The timing reveals urgency more than confidence. Larger aircraft mean fewer frames to replace grounded Western jets. Fewer frames mean faster numerical recovery. On paper, the logic is clean. In practice, it concentrates risk. 
When size is chosen by constraint rather than strategy, efficiency may improve, but resilience rarely does. So is it an optimized response to a constrained system or simply proof of how little room that system now has to maneuver? If SJ100 was a technical response to sanctions, SJ Next represents something deeper. Import substitution turned into a governing design philosophy. Every major decision, from engines to avionics, from materials to production tempo, is shaped less by global optimization. But can this be built, supported, and sustained without external permission? The PD-8 engine is the clearest symbol of that shift. It is not the most efficient turbofan in its class, but it is one Russia can fully control, and in today's environment, control matters more than marginal gains in fuel burn or noise margins. But designing around controllability fundamentally alters the development playbook. Western manufacturers stretch aircraft only after thousands of flight hours, revealing where margins truly lie. Yakovlev is moving in parallel. It is being shaped while SJ-100 is still proving itself through certification flights. That compresses learning cycles and pushes unknowns forward, locking assumptions into a heavier airframe before operational reality has had time to correct them. This philosophy also reshapes the supplier ecosystem. Instead of selecting best-in-class components globally, the program must elevate domestic suppliers to meet roles they were never originally designed for. In a Western program, a weak subsystem can be swapped out. Here, it cannot. Reliability, spare parts flow, dispatch rates and maintenance maturity rise or fall together. The aircraft becomes only as strong as its least mature supplier. From Moscow's perspective, this trade-off is acceptable. An aircraft that can fly every day inside a closed system is now more valuable than a superior one that cannot fly at all. The next gen is not designed to outclass the A220 or the E195E2. It is designed to replace them where they no longer exist. And that makes the program less an aerodynamic gamble and more a systemic experiment. But whether an aircraft optimized for isolation can ever function competitively once it leaves it. No matter how coherent SJ Next looks on paper, its trajectory eventually runs into a hard boundary, certification. Inside Russia, the rules are controllable. Outside, they are not. Global commercial aviation is governed by a tightly interconnected system of regulators, EASA, FAA, Transport Canada, where trust is accumulated slowly and lost quickly. For the superjet lineage, that trust was already fragile before 2022. After sanctions, it effectively collapsed. The original aircraft struggled with certification credibility even when Western partners were involved. Inconsistent dispatch reliability, engine support issues, and fragmented maintenance networks left a lasting impression on lessers and airlines. The plane, despite being technically more autonomous, inherits that reputation without inheriting the same access to validation pathways. Certification may be achieved domestically, but mutual recognition abroad is an entirely different battle, one that requires political alignment, data transparency, and long-term operational proof. This creates a ceiling for SJ Next that no stretch can overcome. Without ESA or FAA validation, the aircraft is effectively locked out of large portions of the global market. Leasing becomes difficult. Residual values remain uncertain. Insurance costs rise. Even friendly or neutral countries hesitate when an aircraft cannot freely rotate across borders or be remarketed if an airline's strategy changes. The jet may be physically capable of flying farther, but commercially, its range shrinks. There is also a timing paradox. Certification processes take years, but airlines plan fleets decades ahead. While Western manufacturers can promise continuity, 
upgrades and global support, the next plane can only promise availability within a defined political perimeter. That makes it suitable for captive markets, but fragile everywhere else. The aircraft does not fail because it cannot fly. It fails because it cannot move freely in the system that aviation has built. And this is where the program's ambition quietly narrows. The next is not truly competing with the A220 or Embraer E2 on equal terms. It is competing for relevance inside a fragmented world where parallel aviation ecosystems are forming. One open and interoperable, measured by traditional standards, it would struggle to qualify as a success. It is unlikely to secure large export orders. It will not set new benchmarks in fuel efficiency or operating economics. And it will almost certainly remain absent from the world's largest leasing portfolios. But those metrics assume a single global aviation system, an assumption that no longer fully holds. In the environment, the next is designed for. Success looks different. It means keeping domestic airlines flying without dependence on hostile supply chains. It means replacing capacity that cannot be legally or reliably maintained. It means sustaining production lines, engineering teams, and maintenance infrastructure through continuity rather than scale. In that context, an aircraft does not need to dominate markets. It only needs to exist and keep working. This reframing reveals the program's real objective. SJ Next is not meant to challenge the Airbus Boeing Embraer hierarchy. It is meant to ensure that hierarchy is no longer a single point of failure. Even a modest fleet, operating consistently inside a closed ecosystem, delivers strategic value that cannot be measured by sales charts alone. Resilience becomes the metric. Predictability replaces growth. Yet this comes with a long-term cost. Isolation protects the system, but it also limits feedback, innovation, and pressure to improve. Without exposure to global competition, performance ceilings tend to harden. Over time, divergence grows, not just in technology, but in operational culture and expectations. The gap does not close it stabilizes. And that leaves the industry with an uncomfortable reality. Commercial aviation, once defined by interoperability and shared standards, is drifting toward parallel ecosystems. Aircraft like SJ Next are not anomalies. They are signals. Signals that the future of aviation may be less about who builds the best airplane and more about who can keep building airplanes at all, under constraint. In short, the story of SJ Next isn't about beating Airbus or Embraer. It's about what happens when aviation is forced to adapt inside hard limits. As global supply chains fracture and politics reshape access, aircraft are no longer judged only by efficiency, but by survivability. It may never dominate the skies, but it signals a future where parallel aviation systems quietly emerge. Is resilience the new definition of success in aviation, or does isolation ultimately slow everyone down? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below.